slightly more in-depth look at processors and their technology. Basic overview, we're going to have the parts, the fact it only understands one language, the basics of architecture, and then translating down and up. So the, before we get to any of that though, the basics. The processor uses the state of a two-state transistor to hold and operate on data. Each transistor is tiny. Current top-of-the-line technology has them at 22 nanometers wide each. The theoretical minimum is less than three molecules in width, one molecule for a positive terminal, one molecule for the negative terminal, and the size of an electron between them for the electron that sits in there when it's got a positive, when it's got a charged reading. The components of our processor are the actual processing cores. These can be arithmetic lo logic units, Boolean logic units, graphics logic units, lots of different types of logic units. We're just going to call them processing cores. They take in data and perform the operations given by the instructions. They can either go through a single cycle in which each operation is completed in its entirety as it's read in, or as a pipeline machine where it does parts of each instruction and can do multiple instructions at a time, which increases performance by increasing throughput significantly. And then the cache, small, extremely fast memory. It's located right on the processor chip. Think RAM on steroids. It holds data to be immediately used by the processor, but it doesn't hold very much because if you have too much of a cache, well, then the time it takes to read it takes away from the speed up gained by having a cache. And then the machine language, the only language the processor reads, binary. The decoder unit takes a binary string of a set size, and the size is given by the architecture type, and, and sends it to different parts of the processor that control the various operations. Each string contains the instruction and either the data to be operated on or instructions on how to get the data if you have to get the data out of memory, which is usually gotten out of the cache unless something's going kind of wrong. Now the architecture determines the instruction set, the size of each instruction, and how efficient the operations are. Currently the most common architecture size is 64-bit, which refers to the number of bits in each instruction bit string. The architecture is unique to the hardware, specifically the processor, although a manufacturer will generally use the same architecture setup for multiple processors across the same generation. So all other processors that are the same generation as the one in the 990 we just looked at will have the same architecture. And in fact, it might share the, its architecture with the previous generation and the next generation. Because making architecture is really complicated, really difficult, and usually making a new architecture, it, isn't worth the expense until you get to a major upgrade from previous hardware. And now translating down and up. The pro we, I call it translating down because you tr the processor, actually the compiler translates down from a semi-readable language, machine assembly language, to binary machine language. The architecture instructions themselves are written in, a, in binary, but we, we type them in assembly language just so we can actually read it because trying to read binary is not fun or easy. Assembly languages are not 100% machine dependent, but must be translated to the instruction set of the machine they are running on. This is usually done by a compiler, and compilers are complicated. Um, translation is made easier by limiting the assembly code to have mostly only the same instructions as the architecture set. You can sometimes make pseudo instructions that contain multiple instruction set instructions, but that's done as rarely as can be gotten away with to speed up the translation process. And that's it. I mean, that's the basics of the processor as far as the in-depth details. Um, so could you tell more about the microprocessor which we have in this computer? The one in there is an Intel i5-2500, it's a 3.3 gigahertz processor that has um, the capability to be turbo boosted through the, the BIOS increasing the amount of power going to it to a 3.7 gigahertz, any higher and the cooling system probably won't support it, I'm sure it can be boosted higher. Um, it has a 6 megabyte cache and it does not have hyper-threading. Hyper-threading allows a single process thread to be split across multiple cores. That's a feature of higher-end 
computer or processors and isn't really needed for any of the work done on here. You generally only see hyper-threaded needing, need, hyper-threading needed for high-performance applications, be they scientific, gaming, what have you. Um, the pro processor we have, I believe, is on the Sandy Bridge uh, chip type, which means it can be swapped out with any other Sandy Bridge processor. So it is entirely possible to yank that processor out and put in like an i7. But you have to make sure it matches the socket type, otherwise you're going to have a really bad time and destroy your processor and your motherboard. It's one of the AM3s, right? Hmm? It's one of the AM3s. Right? So AM3 is AMD. This yeah, is yeah. Intel. Intel names their sockets more or less after cities in the modern era. Um, the original i5 and i7 were Bloom, Bloomfield, Linfield, I believe there's another field after that. Then they made the Sandy Bridge, which is the most current. The Socket AM series, that's AMD, and you had Socket AM, Socket AM Plus, AM2, AM2 Plus, and now we're on Socket AM3. Um, but that's really all there is that we need to know about the processor, unless you want, I mean, signs of processor failure are, lights are on, nobody's home. You turn it on, it lights up, and absolutely nothing happens. That means if there's not even error messages coming up, odds are you've got a processor failure because it's not processing anything. It's just getting power. Yeah, that's about all I can really give on a processor without a much longer time frame.